welcome to the webinar. My name is Warren Pretorius and I'm joined by Ron Imbriali and Chuck Wilmot. Um, between the three of us, we have over 60 years of experience with Dartfish. In today's webinar, we hope to give you an understanding of remote coaching and the components needed. We'll also suggest a workflow and then show you a couple of real life case studies. As all are aware, remote coaching has, has been brought to the forefront because of recent events. Um, it has always been relevant, but now it becomes part of the new normal in athletic coaching. Remote coaching, when done properly, allows you to extend your coaching reach and enhance your coaching model. A robust distance, distance learning model enables you to increase productivity by avoiding duplication of effort. And a single well-recorded lesson can be shared with multiple athletes simultaneously and then shared again in the future. Other technologies that, uh, that are available that will help benefit remote coaching are um, things like Zoom, Skype, Teams, etc. So there are two different remote coaching models available from Dartfish. The first is an enterprise solution for organizations that have a need uh, for collaboration between multiple coaches, staff and athletes. And this model requires a Dartfish TV channel. The second is a basic one-to-many model. It is used by a single coach to work with his or her athletes. And this model uses a personal cloud, which is part of the Live S annual subscription. For those of you that um, do not have a Dartfish license, you will have received a, a trial version of Live S, which you can hopefully, which you can download and then test out some of the uh, theories that we're showing. As mentioned, the enterprise model's core element is a Dartfish TV channel that connects all parties, athletes, coaches, and staff. National governing bodies, pro teams, colleges, academies, and even high schools would use this many-to-many -many model. Athletes can consume educational content and also upload their own performance footage for analysis. In addition to sharing analyses with coaches, with athletes, the coaches can access other content on the channel. The channel has many other attributes also, like the ability to monetize content, integrate with third-party websites, connect to reporting APIs, and a whole lot more. But it is a basic model that we'll focus on today. Student basically sends footage to the coach using many free tools available, like WeTransfer, Google Drive, Dropbox, etc. And then the coach uses Dartfish software to create a professional analysis. This analysis is then shared via personal cloud with the athlete. Your personal cloud is included in the Live S um, software suite. The components we're highlighting are LiveS software, which has powerful technical analysis tools and a tagging module for game match analysis. In any remote coaching model, the sharing platform is arguably the most important. Dartfish's personal cloud allows you to share personal collection with an athlete or general collections with an entire team. And the beauty is that the athlete does not need any software and they can access from any web-enabled web device. So the first thing I'd like to show you is a case study with, with tennis, and then we'll show you know, a case study in baseball and also one in soccer. So right here, I'm gonna to switch to the software and explain a couple of things. The first is the student would send me video and you know, if they upload it, I would download it or I could, I could use the importer built into the software, or well, in this case, I have the match already on my computer and I've downloaded it. It's in a folder, and this is the match that I'm going to show you. I'm gonna open it up. So this is a pro match. The first thing to show is the tagging panels that you build, okay? There are training tutorials available and an excellent webinar that was done last week on creating a tagging panel. But basically what you would do is, is create a tagging panel uh, based on your coaching philosophy 
or you can purchase a, a panel or you can um, you can have someone share a panel with you. So uh, basically what you're doing is watching the match and as you watch the match or the game events, you're clicking buttons and creating um, an event and also describing what that event is. In tennis, the event would be a point and then lots of things happen in that point. So down at the bottom here, I've actually got a match that has been charted or tagged. And you can see that each of these events is a line item. So if I was to click on this one here, yeah, I'd see that particular point. And along this line is everything that happened in that point. These events can also be um, exported. So what I can do is I can save this as a CSV. And really all this is is, is a, a glorified um, Excel document that is linked to the actual event. And that's why I can click on a particular line and while I have the match open, I can, I can see that particular event. But this is the actual raw data for the match. Okay, so a really big um, Excel document. Why this is important is because I can use this outside of the software to generate more enriched or enhanced reports. So you don't have to always do everything with the, within the software. An example of this um, report, and I'll just show you briefly that we've produced outside is something like this. So very complex, okay, but essentially this kind of report is done you know, using a data visualization tool. Um, we use Click or Power BI, but you can do some stuff, some pretty great stuff, even using Excel pivot tables. Um, going back to the filters over here is that I can go ahead and if I am doing a presentation with my player, um, to avoid analysis paralysis, okay, I can maybe pre-search match defining moments. So let's just say I went in here and did a simple search for the winners for player A. So player A in this case is Djokovic and here is all the winners that I've already uh, done a text search on. Okay, when I built my panel, I was all also able to color code specific events, like the green over here would be a game point, okay? Whereas if there's a red point, it would be a, a break point. So here I can simply just go click on the color filter then and take a look at just the break points. So, um, and then I can go to my, what we call a montage and a montage is simply a, a, a simple way to create a highlight reel. So I can drag any of these events, okay? So if I just take all of these and put it into the montage, I can then go ahead and share this or create a separate um, a clip that I would share a more directed clip rather than showing the whole match. But I can also share the entire match. So if I was to upload this, and we'll, I'll show you the, the result in a, in, in a minute here, I can share these events. Now this particular match was you know, a couple of hours long. So what would happen here is that I would extract just the ball in play and upload this to my personal cloud so that the player would get the entire match with all of the dead time taken out. We also have a simple way of creating a report. So, so this is a report in the software and um, you can, um, it, it, it is very easy to actually to, to, to build any of, the, any of the reports in the software. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, close this up a little bit so that it's not too confusing. But these are some of the reports that I've, I've built. So I've got one for rally length, I've got one for the, you, you know, um, uh, anything in here for return data, for serve data. And I just want to show you one of them over here for last shot data. If I did go and select any of these for errors, this would be another way of filter, filtering just those errors. And then I can go back to the montage and drag these in. And I can, you know, I can drag just one if I want and add it to my existing list and then upload it. So let's go take a look at what happens, what my player gets. Um, let me just go to, once I've uploaded it and you saw the wizard there, the player would get the montage of just the winners. And this is just a short highlight reel. 
of just 10 winners, 10 or 11 winners that they've hit. Or I can go back and take a look at the entire match. When the player gets the match, they also get any of those events and they become filters online. So here, the player can go in and say, you know, I want to go take a look at just the first serves made in the deuce court. And I want to go take a look at when I win the point. And there they are. And then they can watch all of those. So um, with that, I'm going to go back to the, the PowerPoint and see if Chuck is ready to show what he is, he's got for us. Waiting for you Chuck, to share your screen you more. There you go. Thank you. Okay. My example is going to be, by the way, my name's Chuck Wilmot. I'm responsible for the baseball softball products uh, for Darkfish. And in this example, I'm going to do something similar to what Warren just showed you, but I'm going to be focusing, in this case, on a softball application, where what we're going to be doing is reviewing a hitter's plate appearances in the game. So we're going to review that. We can, we can, this could be again any sport, but we're going to show baseball and softball in this case. And it could be any situation in a game that you wanted to review with the player. In this case, we're going to be looking at a hitter and we're going to be looking at their plate appearances. So the, the process is somewhat the same as what Warren showed you that we're going to capture video uh, of the game. And if we have already, if, our, if we're in a team, team atmosphere and we've captured the video of the game from some angle, center field, home plate, uh, we're going to use video uh, as, as the review mechanism. We also have the ability, if this is more of an academy or someone that's doing remote coaching, is the parent or the friend can uh, actually upload the video to the, uh, the, the plate appearances uh, of the video to the coach. And the athlete then would, after the, the recording, would upload that video again through several mechanisms, which we'll show a little bit more in detail on the next slides. The coach would then analyze it, and the method of analyzing for uh, this kind of application is to basically tag the, the video that was sent. So at a very minimum, we're going to tag it with the uh, hitter's name. So we can look at, as, as Warren showed you, we can look at each one of the pitches in the game or the appearances and be able to quickly uh, uh, edit and analyze that. So it creates the montage the same way that Warren did in the tennis, and we basically conduct the assessment or the review session uh, with the athlete uh, by uh, using the Darkfish software and creating those, those uh, pitches in each one of the plate appearances that we can review. We distribute that. Uh, to either the Darkfish TV channel, if you're an enterprise client, or your personal cloud if you're a basic remote coach. Then you have the option, of course, to do Skype meetings, Zoom meetings, uh, or basically send the, the video. So let's go into a little bit more detail. We'll break one each one of these down. So in the baseball softball market, when we're capturing the video, we can, if you're uh, and more of a an enterprise customer, you're probably going to be using either IP cameras in the stadium or you're going to take portable cameras. Just let the cameras run to collect the video. Uh, if you're a client, more of the basic remote client, you can record again with the portable camera. You can even use uh, your phone or an iPad to capture the plate appearances. If you're the first one there where the client is actually going to be you the video, 
If you're a basic remote, the client's going to upload the video via some sort of file sharing platform, like we share, uh, Dropbox, any any of the many remote sharing clients that are out there. If you're an enterprise client, uh, you're probably going to have them upload the video to your Darkfish TV channel. And we actually have a new web web uploader that's going to be released in the next week or so. Customers can easily upload to your to for enterprise customers to your Darkfish TV channel. Then the process to analyze is either a coach or a staff member is going to chart or tag uh, the video that they get. Now we have several levels of baseball softball panels. The one I'm showing here right now is a very simplistic panel where all you're doing is is having the, the lineup in there where you're knowing who the pitcher is and who the hitter is you're actually capturing the plate appearances. And once you do that, of course, then you can go up here, like on the left, you can just select the hitter that you want to review the, uh, the game data with. You select that, and then as Warren showed you, you can either drag it over into the montage, or you select it and hit this plus button. That will take all of the pitches or the plate appearances, whichever you're you're cutting up and put that into a montage that you can later edit and and add some content content that we'll show you. The the second version is a more complex panel. This is uh, where you're actually charting every pitch, and in addition to just charting who the pitcher and the hitter are, you're actually adding more intelligent content to know the pitch location, the pitch type, what the result of the pitch was. Uh, and of course, all of that data can be transformed over. So when you're creating this review, you have the ability as, as Warren showed you, not only can you look at who the person was in his case, he was showing winners and, and first serves and all of that kind of stuff in baseball, we could show, let's look at the hitter when the ball was put in play. Let's look at the hitter when all fastballs were, or, or rise balls in the softball cases was thrown to them. You have the ability to, bolt, to filter on any of the keywords that are generated uh, from this data. Again, the rows are all pitches and the columns are all information about those pitches. Now, we optionally have a, a version that not only can uh, in baseball and softball, not only can you look at the video, but you also can take that data and generate these analytic reports that allow you to choose uh, a hitter and look at the pitch locations graphically, look at spray charts. You can filter on much more data either across the season against the specific uh, opponent or in a specific game. And again, you're able to look at uh, player development performance, and you're also able to look at tendencies of players for opponent scouting. So once you use any of those functions to get the video down into the montage, then you're going to go through, if, if people saw the, uh, the webinar that we did yesterday, uh, you know, we added these, these teaching points where we're gonna do the same thing for the pitches because the, the, the process is we're gonna review all the pitches in a plate appearance uh, for this athlete. So you have the ability, you can see in this case, I drew uh, drew on the diagram the, the plate, so the pitch, the strike location. Uh, I've given him information about the pitch. I've kind of analyzed it the same as I would do is if I had that person in my office and basically going through a review. So once you do that, then you upload that montage again, the same way that we did yesterday, and you can create uh, your text, your markups, your voiceovers, and you can share that. If you're uh, an enterprise customer, you can share that to your Garfish TV. If 
If you're an individual coach, you can share that to your uh, personal cloud, and therefore you can then send the links out to the customer and conduct the, the review session either through Zoom, Skype, or any of the uh, meeting type packages even like this, and uh, email the link to the client or the athlete where they can view the video without having any additional applications on their mobile devices or computers. They're able to look at this on basically any device that's web connected. So let me go ahead now into the software. And I'm going to basically show you that workflow to capture, analyze, share. So in this case, we've got a game and you can see this is a whole game again, hour and 45 minutes of a game that we captured from center field. And what I'm going to do then is I will go into, watch this video and go into the tagging module. You can see I've got two types of tagging modules that I can supply these tagging modules to anybody that wants. This is, uh, this is the simple panel. And what you would do is just say who the pitcher is, and who the hitter is, and then and when the pitch happens. So what we're doing in this case is the only thing that we want to identify is we want to see all the at-bats of, of this particular hitter and this particular hitter against this pitcher. And if you were charting the whole game, of course, you could switch teams by saying at the end, and you can see that the players changed because you put this this uh, lineup basically in when you started the game setup. So it's very e easy to do. You uh, chart the, uh, you watch the, the video and you chart the game and it's going to break it up into these pitches. Now the other one that we have, a, a more complete tagging panel is again, you go through the same process of setting up the lineup and you chart that. And now you can see that the panel is follows, in this case, the softball rules or baseball rules, and you're able to chart and push buttons the same as, as Warren did in his example, but you're adding uh, information about every pitch. So the event's going to be a pitch, and then this, these buttons are going to be information about that pitch. So once you get that and it's tagged, then I can go in through several mechanisms, and I can say I want to find all the uh, the video, basically, of this player. When I do that, you see it filtered this out and just created the information for this player. If I'm looking at this, then I'm looking at this particular hitter. So I've, I've filtered all this, and I can filter this not only on uh, information of, of the hitter, but I could say I want to see all the information when the rise ball was thrown to this hitter. Or I could say when the, the ball was put in play. So there's all the, the different multiple things that you can find that I want to create a montage where I can send this out to the video. I can record on it, draw on it versus just being raw video recording. So again, the way that I would do that is I would move over. I would take these these clips and I could select them all, the ones that I want. And I either, I typically just say I'm going to add that to the montage with this plus. You could drag them in as well. And this is what it basically looks like. So now what I've got is all the pitches that were thrown at this in these different plate appearances. And what I did was I can look at the video of each pitch, but what I've added, the intelligent content, is I've taken these and added the pitch to it. So this is the plate appearance one, first pitch. You can see I can move the video and kind of look at this pitch in detail. I go to the next pitch. You can see I've got the plate drawn here. So now I'm looking at the where the ball was thrown to and there's the third plate appearance you can see i made these notes on what the count was and what the pitch result was and i've i've added some notes here to say specifically what this this was 
So in this case, it was a good pitch right over the out, down and away on the hitter. And she hits the ball hard. Unfortunately, right to the third baseman was playing it well. And it was a double play. But she did hit the ball hard. So I can go through basically every one of these. This is the second plate appearance, first pitch. And you can see some of these good things is that this was a uh, pitch. You see, it's unfortunately right over the middle of the plate. She takes the ball with uh, runners on first and second. I know uh, this particular hitter wished that she would have had that pitch back. So what, again, we're doing is just reviewing every plate appearance and every pitch thrown that we could do. The same thing as if this player had come into the office and we were reviewing the video with him for player development. You could also do the same thing for opponent scouting. So you could have, have many pitches and, and sit down. Most likely in that case, you know, you're going to have a Zoom meeting or something with, with all of your, your hitters that maybe they're evaluating this pitcher and you're going to see how this pitcher has, uh, throws in different counts and different situations. Again, we have these analytic reports that give you that tendency diagram that can get to this video that way as well. But, what I would do here is is basically go into the presentation mode again. I would go here and, and present and add audio to this mode. And then I would basically go through each one of these pitches. And I would be talking and showing specifically every pitch, every plate appearance and every pitch. And I'm recording that. And afterwards, I would just upload that to, yeah, again, if I'm a general uh, remote client, a basic remote client, I would upload that to the cloud. If I'm a program, I'm going to upload that to the collection of the player, and I'm going to then be able to share it out. And I'm going to show you specifically what that looks like. So here's the video. I'm in my collection here, my personal collection. And you can see here that this has got the audio and here. So I just went through that. Every one of those pitch, I narrated it like John Madden would narrate things. And then I share that, 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 that I can have this review session again with the customer over some meeting tools, Zoom. Skype, or I can send it to them and they can look at it at any period of time. I'm going to, everyone that's attending, I'm going to be sending uh, this example out to, and you'll be able to see the whole workflow and the, the process in general. So with that, I'm going to uh, give the screen back to Warren, and we'll go on to the next case study. Okay, great. Thanks, Chuck. Um, yeah. Now let's take a look at another case study, and we'll we'll go to Ron. Ron, you ready? I am. Okay. Uh, thank you, both Warren and Chuck. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do, Warren and Chuck, as you've seen, have some pretty uh, uh, deep layered vertical solutions uh, for both tennis and for diamond sports. I'm going to uh, Kind of use. I'm going to use uh, American soccer and uh, um, European football as an example, uh, but I'm going to show you how you can just with the the, the live S's that you have and actually a personal cloud, um, you can really do uh, a lot of analysis and tagging uh, and publishing and remote coaching for any flow sport. Uh, and when I talk about a flow sport, it's like soccer, like lacrosse in the United States, like field or ice hockey, basketball, handball, volleyball, etc. There's lots of sports uh, which are flow sports uh, where tennis and baseball and, and softball are more sports where you have specific events uh, and, and, and quite a bit of dead time, actually. So I'm going to use that. Uh, again, I'm, I'm reinforcing a lot of what both Warren and Chuck have just gone over. Um, in this case, video, uh, it has to start with video. It's imported from many, many different sources. Um, 
and we're very flexible there. Uh, once the video is imported, the coach takes that video, uh, uses the appropriate tagging panel for the specific sport that they're involved in. Uh, and they're going to tag and then they're going to develop this highlight presentation or whatever their point they're trying to get across to whoever they're trying to get across to. And then they're going to uh, take and uh, publish that information online uh, where somebody's going to either remotely look at it without the coach involved or the coach is going to get involved with some sort of uh, um, uh, session like a Zoom session or a, a Microsoft Teams session or go to meeting type session. Uh, so um, the video, uh, again, can be imported from many sources. A lot of these things, I'm just repeating what both Chuck and Warren have said. Um, you know, any type of camera, from handheld cameras to GoPros to IP cameras, um, from many, many different types of storage devices. Um, uh, this device uh, down here um, is is a neighbor media device uh, that you could use to get it off the video off the internet uh, or you can get video off of a broadcast tv or anything like that so there's lots of different sources you're basically getting it into the library on dartfish um, and then uh, in the case where you don't have in most cases where it's a team sport you probably have the video you're the coach you already have the video but there could be a number of cases where let's say you're doing uh, an analysis for a junior team or something, or for somebody where a parent is, is bidding on the game, then really uh, you just have to get the video from the parent. In that case, the parent can take it with whatever source he wants to, and then he's really going to use different types of transfer devices, and there's lots of different ones that are available, some of them being better for larger files. Uh, a lot of them are, most of them are free for files up to two gigabytes um, and, and all of them have different uh, different features. But basically you you get the video um, and then you're going to download that video again into Dartfish. And really, it's really a pretty simple three step pro process here. I got to I play the game and this is this is known as post tagging in this case. Live tagging is where the game is actually being taking place at that time and you're videoing and then you're actually tagging in real time. Um, this is a post tagging exercise in that you already had the video. The nice part about that is you can do it in whatever time you had. You can stop the video, you can go backwards, you can go forward, uh, you can replay things. Uh, so, so you have a lot of time to actually do the tagging. So you're playing the video, you're using the appropriate tagging panel, uh, uh, for the sport you're doing. In this case, it happens to be the soccer panel. And then you're really just producing indexes. You're really producing what we, what Darkish refers to as the events that are important to you in the game. Uh, and those events can be whatever is important to you in the game. They can be objective tags or they can be subjective tags. Uh, and then, um, it, it, then the coach it, within the software, once he's tagged everything, now he's really developing the key indicators. You know, what, what, what is of interest to me? And within the actual software, we have lots, and I think both Warren and Chuck showed this, we have lots of different reports um, that you can look at uh, to be able to do uh, iterative searches. And basically what you're doing is you're, you're developing this montage. The montage is your presentation. And once you've developed it, depending on what audience you are sending it out to, if you're sending it out to the whole team, then you might do something, one thing. If you're sending it out to an individual player, you might go in and say, I'm going to grab Callie's uh, uh, touches, and then I'm going to put a presentation together for, t for Callie. Or maybe I want to send it out to uh, a, a, the defensive line and I want to talk about shaping and things like that. So I take it and send it out to my entire defensive line. And so you have the, that kind of flexibility to go do that. Uh, and then w once you develop the montage, um, you can just send it out without actually uh, putting any voiceover on it. But you also have that ability to go one more step to what we call the presentation mode. 
where you then can actually uh, make it more like the the um, the team or the actual players right in the room with you, and you can talk over it just like you were doing a chalkboard talk. Um, and then w once you do that, you publish it, and by publishing it, then basically you can you can someone can remotely look at it on their mobile phone or on any browser based device. Uh, you, if you put the audio on it, you may not have, need to have a meeting till later on. Uh, if you want to have a meeting with them and go over the video, then you could have a, uh, a meeting using many of the uh, web services like Zoom or Skype or GoToMeeting or Microsoft Teams. And um, once you decide what you're going to look at, you, once it's up on the web, you, you just share that thing. You can share it out to everybody. Um, by just copying a link, that link can go to the whole team. Uh, it can be a collection, so everything is collection-based. You can have uh, collections for each player, you can have a collection for the whole team, you can have a collection for individual coaches. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just quickly go to the software here. So this is an example, this is the software. Now what I've done in the software, uh, which you can do, is all our windows are floatable. So what you can do is you can actually float windows. And now, uh, example, I'm, I'm, I'm on a 13 inch laptop monitor, so I don't have as much room. Uh, if you have a larger monitor, you're gonna have more room to float things around. You can hide uh, windows, you can do whatever you want as far as that. If you have two monitors, you can extend them and you can take some of these windows out to another monitor, which makes it very nice for, for putting presentations together. So uh, the whole thing starts with the tagging panel. I mean, here's the here's an example of a tagging panel for soccer, that, but that's used. And there's lots of different ones floating around. I'm just looking at game pieces or action pieces. I'm looking at some results, whether it was a good or poor play. I'm looking at the players, and I'm also looking at what we call the zone tool. I'm looking at positions on the field, and I can just sit here as the game goes on and press these buttons and come up with with my tags. Um, once I do that, and I'll just uh, make this smaller, so I put that behind there. Um, then I, I have the tags here, okay? And I can bring up all the tags. These would be all the tags in the game, once I've tagged the whole game. Okay. Or I can come in here and I can say, uh, I want to bring this table up or I want to come over here. I want to see all the tags when I was in zone 11. Okay. I want to see tags only when the shots were on goal. So here's four shots on goal. Or I can come over to this table. For example, I want to look at Callie's shots. I want to look at the ones I've labeled special for Callie over here. And as you can see, all I'm doing is getting those. You know, this is a player versus action. Let's say I want to take a player versus uh, a field zone. So now I can look at when zone. I want to look when, you know, everybody, all, all my events within zone two, all of my events within zone 11. So all these things, once I have them, I can drag them over or just hit the plus sign. I think Chuck showed that. If I want to take this and say, I want to take this header and hit the plus sign, it just adds it to the montage there. And then I have the montage. So then once you're in the montage, you can then just decide, I could just, publish this montage right now if I want to, or I can go then to the presentation mode and I can add my voiceover and, and all the things like that. Once I've done that, I then um, can go, it's published, I go up and here it is in, in the, my collection. And in this case, what I've done is I've published the entire game up here with all the tags. So you, you have lots of options. You can publish the montage, which is special, events and highlights and key indicators that you want to put together to to make a point you can publish the entire game with with all the game including all the dead spots and everything or as warren said i think he said you can publish the game with just the tags and then the dead spots are out this happens to be the entire game here and and so online i come in here and do some of the same things i did there i want to look at the shots the four shots on goal I want to look at what happened uh, in, so none of the shots were, uh, one shot was from zone 11. So I want to look at that. And then, so I can go back and do this. And again, 
I can share this out to the players through lots of different sources. I know all of this can be overwhelming. So in summary, I'm just going to uh, um, backtrack a bit and just go through the workflow. Um, all of the stuff that you have heard, you know, as I said, can be overwhelming, but there are tutorials available. And as they say, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You do it one bite at a time. Um, so the basic workflow is the capture, analyze, share. The student films their stroke and then uploads to the coach. The coach downloads the raw clip and then he uses Dartfish Live Air software to conduct the analysis. And once that is done, then he'll share uh, via the personal cloud. Going back to the tennis model on the cap on the capturing, you know, we use a GoPro camera and that is just hung at the at the top of the fence and and then it's filmed. Um, we then the student or the parent who whoever did the filming would then um, take that video and uh, from the camera, take the SD card out and then use WeTransfer or Box or Google Drive, or they would just simply give the SD card um, to the coach. Um, and then what the coach would do is do the analysis in the in the software. So as, as we said before, you'd go ahead and build your own panel. And th those panels can be you know, very simple or they can get be, be more complex. Um, there's a great webinar, like I said, on building a tagging panel, which we'll, um, I'll, I'll show you later. We'll show you how to access. Um, once, once this video is uploaded by the coach, you know, it's uploaded to personal cloud, the player will then be able to go on and view this. So we would create a collection for the player and then send them a link and then they can access that. Once they access it, they'll then be able to review the match footage themselves and use any of the filters that, um, uh, that have been inherited by the way that you build your tagging panel. And then they'd be able to do their own searches. With that, we'd like to thank you for attending.